Jesse Foster welcomes you to Father Nation, Nation. where other dads illuminate your path to become a better father. Prepare to enter into the man cave. And welcome to Father Nation. This is Jesse Foster. And on Father Nation, we talk about fatherhood. I interview dads about their experiences as a dad so that they can share their wisdom and experiences with you. Let their journey illuminate your path. Father Nation is also made possible in part by Al Cole from CBS Radio through the success of his show, People of Distinction. Among the shows heard on the Al Cole People of Distinction broadcasting network is with the actress who played the part of Drew Barrymore's mother on Steven Spielberg's E.T., actress Dee Wallace. I'm happy to have Father Nation now airing over the Live 365 network and the iTunes radio network. Today on the show, we have Bob Monroe, and he's the founder of Art of Masculinity. He's in British Columbia, Canada, and Bob, thank you so much for coming on Father Nation. As we begin, maybe you can just tell us a little more about yourself and your family. Well, I'm a father, uh, grandfather, stepfather, uh, 67 years old, and I uh, was actually raised in Saskatchewan, farm-raised, if you like. I moved out here to Vancouver, B.C. in 1975. I've... uh, had many, many different careers over the years, over the 60, 60 plus years. So I was raised on a farm, worked in the oil rigs in Alberta, up in the Arctic, been a firefighter, construction, built houses, <clears throat> pardon me, telecommunications, restaurateur, on and on and on. But my passion really for the last 25 years has been working with men. And um, I've been married a couple times. Uh, my first marriage, I had two children. Uh, they are currently... Uh, coming up 40, 44 and sorry, 45 and 43. My daughter's the oldest. And uh, I have raised two stepsons for the last 28 years there. Well, they're growing up now and out of the house, but I've got two boys that are stepsons that are going to be 30 and 34 coming up very soon. And I've got two granddaughters that are, uh, i got to stop and think here for a minute, 12 and 15. All right. And let's, let's talk more about Art of Masculinity. That's mm-hmm. that's your website. It's the website is artofmasculinity.ca, yeah. and you're a founder of that. Uh, can you tell us maybe what what brought you to start this? By the time I hit my late thirties, I had been legally married twice um, and divorced, and I actually divorced my first wife when my children were about nine and eleven. After about a year, I was able to get full custody of them. I raised them through school, but. When I hit 40, 41, I had uh, been with Lucia, my current wife. We've been together now 28 years, but I've been with her for a couple of years. And I, I I thought I knew everything about relationship. You know, 40 years old, I've been married a couple of times, had numerous relationships. But divorce was becoming epidemic all around me. And uh, Lucia was a great gal. We've been together. And I just uh, had some uneasy feelings that if things kept going the way they were, that it, it might not last. And uh, she had two great little boys that I was raising, and so I, a good, two good friends of mine actually persuaded me to go off and do a men's weekend back in December of 1989, which kind of set me on a path, I guess. It got me to really look at myself, who I was as a man, it got me to look at the relationship. I learned a lot of things about myself more than anything, and uh, started to become very involved over the next few years with what I'll call men's work. I just got on a men's team. I started working with different men's groups. And that's grown over the last 25 years to having done many hundreds or thousands of hours of volunteering work, helping men uh, in various areas of their life, not all relationship, but a lot of it relationship oriented and some of it career, some of it whatever they needed. And about four years ago, I decided that it was time to step out and create a a workshop, which is now a retreat for men that uh, helps them get what uh, has been lost over the years. You know, men for, you know, for 15,000 years, men took care of men in most cultures, well, all cultures, actually, I think. And with our modern day society, a lot of that is disappearing. And so men are quite lost out there. They, uh, as a result, a lot of children are being raised without fathers, and uh, a lot of fathers are 
acting more like mothers in relationships. And it's, it's taken a real toll on our, uh, on our society and our children in particular. So I felt I needed to do something to see if we could start making a difference. And we've created something that, that works. It's a, it's a two-day retreat that we've done about eight or nine of them now. We did one in Boston. We did one in Toronto. We've done a number of them here in the lower mainland Vancouver area. And um, my goal is to take this around North America over the next five years and have it in every major city. Well, Bob, let's 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 talk about that. If if uh, a dad out there is interested in uh, learning more about this, he goes to artofmasculinity.ca, mm-hmm. and there he can read more about the retreats and maybe apply. Is that right? That's true. We've uh, we're we've hired a marketing team, so that page will evolve and change a bit as time goes. Currently, there's a little bit of an animated video on there that is uh, that is. Um, Narrated, if you like, by one of our uh, facilitators, Matt Lyons, and it'll it'll give you a pretty good flavor for a lot of the stuff we cover. And we we do cover a lot of elements in in the retreat. We help men discover their purpose. We uh, have a part where we uh, spend a lot of time on the father son relationship, which is one of the most important relationships we have. A lot of really good information on relationships, dealing with women, understanding women. We've <laughs> we've got a couple of uh, a couple of modules that men kind of laugh at when we introduce them. One is called How to Tell What Women Are Thinking. And we've got another one that kind of goes hand in hand with that, that is women are simple. And, you know, women over the years have gotten a lot of mileage out of being complicated and complex and whatnot. But uh, really they are, uh, they are very simple creatures. And once we understand kind of where they're coming from, there's really only three areas that everything they say, do, think, feel comes out of what we call one of three buckets. And once we understand that and realize it and know where they're coming from, they're a lot easier to deal with. I've read in the past that a man's brain is more like a waffle and a woman's brain is more like spaghetti. And you talk about some buckets there. Can you go into a little more detail about that when understanding women by three buckets? There's three main things that basically, I'll say, motivate women or where they're coming from. One is they're burdened by God to take care of everyone. When I say burdened by God, women being the mothers, the nurturers, the caregivers, the givers of life. Their whole, a lot of their whole life is about taking care of, mothering. And so that's one. We, we elaborate on these. These modules take a fair bit of time, so I'll just give you kind of a little snapshot. Okay. Safety and security. Uh, a lot of the fear that women have comes out of a safety and security. Okay. They, um, they are uh, being taken care of, especially not only for them, but once they have children, is very, very high on their list of priorities. So a lot of the stuff that, they, uh, that motivates them and gets them upset or anxious is based around safety, security. And the third one is plan for tomorrow. Uh, they're always about planning for, you know, what am I going to make for dinner? What am I going to wear tomorrow? What am I going to, you know, on and on and on and on. So, and sometimes they get all three of those going on at once. Okay. But if you stop and think when you're in a relationship with a woman or something is coming at you from her, if you're listening and paying attention, I can pretty much guarantee that one or two or perhaps all three of those buckets, as I call them, is where it's coming from. So we have, we have caregivers, safety, security, and, and plan for tomorrow kind of as a, as what women are, if you wanted to kind of describe femininity as maybe some of the main points of their concerns, how, how would you define a, like a man then? If that's, if that's feminine, how would you define masculinity? When you think about masculinity, I got a lot of people think maybe James Bond or uh, Indiana Jones. You know, I think when I think of masculinity, I think of, you know, maybe a fighter, maybe a leader, but maybe a man of integrity. I think about the word passive a lot and maybe a lot of men are, are very passive and that seems to be kind of a anti-masculine uh, trait if you think about the ideal masculine trait but I don't know you you may not have a definition of masculinity but what are, what are some thoughts when, when you think about masculinity versus femininity it's an interesting question I mean we are very different uh, and there's honor is very high on the list uh, being honorable I've got a little thing here I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read it off to you it's uh, it's called a code of honor and it was developed by a group of men 
many years ago, men that I have done work with over the years. And it describes a code that we strive to live up to, okay? And there's a, there's a number of points on here. I'll just read them off to you. And I, I think to me, it epitomizes who men are uh, in many ways. Uh, commitment before ego. Honor the truth. Respect confidentiality. Keep your word. That for me is a big one. I remember my dad as a kid growing up saying, a man without his word has nothing. Be a three-dimensional man. Be prepared. Defend humanity. Always be faithful to the men. Defend the code, this code. Never engage in battles with weaker opponents. Fight only honorable battles. Earn an honor rank. Be humble. Embrace all men. And the last one, which I think is probably the most important one, be an example to children. All good traits, for sure, for defining maybe what a man should be. You're listening to Father Nation today with Bob Monroe. He's with theartofmasculinity.ca, and where he uh, gives retreats for for men. Uh, Bob, let's talk some t- right now about your own personal experiences as a dad. Mm-hmm. What is one daddy dud that you've made in, in the past, but also maybe something you've learned? I'm going to say the biggest one looking back. Uh, I thought about this because you'd prepped me a little bit before this, so I had a bit of a chance to think was probably me leaving uh, my wife and kids when they were 9 and 11. You know, at the time, I didn't think I had any other choices. But uh, if I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have done that. Uh, I believe that, you know, divorce is very, very close to child abuse. Children suffer from divorce, some more than others, but they all suffer from it. And uh, should people stay together just for the children? No. People need to learn how to be with each other so that they can stay together in a healthy environment. And uh, a lot of people don't have those skills or those tools these days, so they wind up in divorce. So I think the biggest error I did way back then, you know, that's uh, more than 30 years ago, was to leave them. Now, I, I, I can kind of justify it a bit, say, well, it took me about a year, but I got custody of my raising through school. Um, I won't go into all the personal stuff that was going on with my wife and I, but uh, if I knew back then what I know now, I know that I could have stayed in that relationship until at least they got through school. And uh, I mean, those, those kids have turned out pretty well. A lot of kids come through divorce and they, they suffer all kinds of uh, uh, problems. Um, you know, some get into trouble, some get into drugs, alcohol, all kinds of things. I was very fortunate my kids didn't do that. My daughter has turned out to be a very successful woman, very powerful. She hasn't, unfortunately, well, I say unfortunately, it's her life, not mine. She's never been married or had had a family, but she's been extremely successful in business. My son, who has uh, a wonderful wife and two daughters, is a, is a stockbroker. He's also done, done very well. But um, that was probably the biggest dud, and I, I could have, looking back, if I'd have had... I guess if you like the support, the skills, the knowledge that I believe I have today, I certainly could have done a, a better job having mom and dad being there taking care of those children through their formative learning years. Yeah, we all have regrets that we look back on and think that we could do things differently if we could go back in time. I guess for the men listening today, if you're in a marriage and you're struggling, um, maybe the, the advice is just to keep committing, keep, keep fighting, keep, keep trying? Men don't have good men in their lives. For thousands of years, men have uh, done things together. They've mentored each other. They've, they've worked together. They've hunted together. They've created things together. They, they've, had, they've been very social together. And the skills and the things that we needed to know as men have been passed down from generation to generation to generation. There's a huge gap in that now. You look around, particularly in our Western culture, not maybe so much in some others, but it, it's it's spreading. Men, as we grow up, we have our boys, you know, our pals. We we grew up with our buddies, and we're very tight. We're very close. But now, what's happening with uh, uh, technology being what it is, and our society and culture being what it is? When men get to an age where they discover women and start getting into relationships, they lose those male relationships almost across the board. 
So we get men in their uh, years where they're starting to raise a family, they're going out to be productive and they're going out in business. They don't have male support in their lives. I've been on a men's team for 25 years, different teams, but some of them have lasted for years, but I've always been on a men's team for the last 25 years. The value I get from that, from being with men every week for at least three hours a week, and because of what I do, I'm, I've got a lot more interaction with men on a daily basis, but I see these men come to these team meetings and we are able to mentor, support, pass on the knowledge, the collective wisdom, if you like, that we have on how to deal with things at work, how to deal with uh, our women in relationship, how to deal with our children. That collective wisdom is very severely lacking in our culture today. And so men are now turning to women to have women tell them how to be a man. Well, how, how silly is that? You know, and God love the women. They, they'll do anything they can to help us, to guide us, to mentor us, but it's not their job. And so most men today in their, from say 20 to whatever, are getting more influence and more advice and more um, how to be coming from the women in their lives because they don't have men to go to. And look what's happening. Divorce is epidemic. Children being raised without fathers or a good male, solid, masculine, male role model in their lives. Our children pay the price. The children are our future. You, you touched there on the power of brotherhood and having other relationships with men. And what about maybe a rites of passages? You t- like maybe when does a boy take that step from boyhood to manhood? And should there be a, some sort of rite of passage? And have you done that with, with, your, with your kids? Yeah, no, that's, that's a, an excellent point. I mean, most cultures throughout history have had rites of passages from men to boy, uh, from boys to men, and that doesn't happen anymore, you know, uh, because I think there's a lot of reasons men or young boys don't have those men in their lives again, as I said before. So a man, a boy thinks now he becomes a man when he gets when he gets laid when he when he has his first experience with a woman. They think, oh, now I'm a man. No, <laughs> you, no, you're not. Uh, and it can take different forms. I've been involved with different men's groups that have created rites of passages uh, for men. I probably didn't really experience that fully until I was 40 years old. This men's workshop that I mentioned that I went to 28 years, 20, 25 or 26 years ago. And that for me, really, I mean, I was a grown man. I'd been married. I had a couple of kids. But I was, to a degree, I was still a mama's boy. I can look back and see that. And it wasn't until I was with that group of men when I was uh, 41 years old. And actually, it's interesting enough, it was on my birthday then through this weekend that I did. My 41st birthday. And that, looking back, was a defining moment for me where I, uh, I really got to see who I was as a man. I accepted myself as a man. I, uh, I became a man. It sounds kind of funny because um, of my age and, you know, having children and whatnot, but... That was, a, that was a big moment for me. A lot of people never experienced that. A lot of men never experienced that. And we, there's different ways I think we can do that if we're raising our sons properly and we're spending time with them and doing things with them. There's, uh, I don't think there's any one set way that that has to happen. But it's something that I believe only men can do with men, to have that rite of passage. So you're talking about maybe there's not a set way of having a rite of passage. And I guess it could be at, at different ages as well. But sure. for for dads out there who have who have a son, what are some maybe ideas of what what they could do for a rite of passage? And at what age would you, if you could redo your your life as a dad and have a rite of passage for your son, what would you do? And at what age? You know, something just came to me as you're asking that question. There's one thing that I've come to believe that we can do ongoing with our sons. And I don't want this to, to sound harsh, but I, I believe our biggest job with our sons is to make life difficult for them. Now, let me just talk about that for a minute because I, I, I kind of want to be clear about it. Um, there's a big difference between mothering and fathering. Just the definition of the words, I think, are very, very different. And uh, I see far too many 
fathers today that are acting like mothers. Our job with our sons, when I say is to make life difficult for them, is to have them earn a lot of stuff that they get in little ways. We can do this from the time they're very young. And, it, you know, it's not, for God's sakes, it's not, it's not so much about discipline. It's not about being abusive. I mean, I, I never spank my kids. I never, that, that's not about that at all. But it's about teaching them right and wrong, about having them um, grow up earning what they get. Uh, if we don't do this, they get out into the world when they're teenagers or young adults. And if they've never had to earn anything, they think that the world owes them a living. They think that they, they think they're entitled. We're, we're, we've got a society of young people with entitlement problems. And it's a tough world out there. If we don't uh, sharpen our boys, if we don't make them um, earn the things they get and be responsible on a daily basis, we're not, we're not doing our job to prepare them for when they leave home and go out into the world and try to make a living. Yeah, Bob, I think I, I that makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I see it as well. I think there are so many kids that maybe aren't taught the concept of having to earn something, and they do have what you call the entitlement mindset. Yeah. And that, that is really actually about responsibility. It's about assuming that others are going to take control for you and make your life better. It's, it's a lack of responsibility. It, I think it fosters excuses as well, and uh, well, it makes it makes, makes makes you passive as well. If you if you're entitled, you, you're never at fault. You don't take you don't take the responsibility. You put it on others, and I think that's kind of the opposite of what a man should be. A man should be the first to take responsibility and not be a victim. Exactly, be accountable. Yeah. Y- yes, don't, exactly. Don't let don't don't expect your television, your school system your government or anybody else to raise your children. That's our job. Our job is to raise the children. School systems to educate them. We can help that'll help manifest that a lot as well, but the internet, the TV, and all those other things, they should not be raising our children, and that's what's happening today. Yeah, I think it's only getting worse with technology. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Bob, how about one habit that has made you a better dad over the years? Is there one specific habit that you can pinpoint? I don't know about a habit. It's uh, the thing that comes to mind is to never argue with their mother in the presence of the children. We're the role models. I'm reminded of. uh, I think back about my parents. My parents were amazing. They were together for about sixty years. I can look back and I can never ever remember my dad raising his voice to my mother or arguing with her. Not once. And you know what they may have done behind closed doors. I don't know, but they had a. And, and they weren't lovey-dovey sort of thing, but they were very respectful of each other. They had a great relationship. They loved each other to death. I know they did. I'll tell you another funny little story that I relate to people sometimes. When they talk about love between uh, parents, uh, I can remember my mother, they've been dead for a number of years, but I can remember my mother saying, not only to me, I've heard her say it to other people, my Kenny, my dad's name was Ken Monroe, my Kenny never, ever told me he loved me. She'd pause and then she would say, but he showed me every day. And when I think back about my mom and dad, I'll bet you he probably never, I, I'm just thinking, and this is let me, I mean, he, he was born in 1904, so he, he's been gone quite a few years. Uh, I don't think he probably ever did say to her verbally that he loved her, but he absolutely, every single day of his life, she knew it. And so when I see people today that are arguing and fighting with each other and I hear men come into my life that you know they had a fight with their wife and they got little kids around and say well why do you do that you can't be doing that and I used to you know I'll be honest I used to, years ago I used to do the same thing but I haven't had an argument or a fight with Lucia in well over 20 years and I believe that particularly when there's children around we cannot be doing that we need to set the example yeah I think actions do often speak louder than words and it's very important very important to uh, have your have your disagreements behind closed doors with kids around. Again, right now you're listening to Father Nation with Jesse Foster. We have Bob Monroe on the show today. He's with the Art of Masculinity. You can find him at artofmasculinity.ca. And uh, Bob, what is one resource? Um, you know, we, you you do a retreat for men where you help them find their passion to. Uh, become a man that both men and women admire. But what is one resource that you use as a 
resource for being a dad, being a man? You know, I, I mentioned a few minutes ago about my parents, and I, uh, that's there's a couple of things. That is one for sure, because my parents were amazing, both of them. My mother had an amazing way with children. Um, so I often, and I remember as I was raising my kids, I would sometimes think, what would my mother do? What would my dad do, sort of thing. So that was a big resource. The other big one is the men that I have in my life. I mean, prior to the age of 40, I didn't have many men in my life. And when I say men, I mean, I was a firefighter for a number of years ago. I had lots of men in my life, but I didn't have many good men in my life that I really trusted, that were on the same page as me, that uh, that I trusted in any way, shape, or form. So now that I've got that resource, my men's team is, is a huge resource because if I've got something going on, and my children are growing up now, so that's. But I'm looking looking back, right, in, into when I was, you know, raising them. To be able to turn to good men uh, that do their best to live by that code I mentioned uh, when I've got something going on is hugely valuable, huge. <clears throat> and also to be able to uh, sit down with uh, the mother of the children and without the children and get on the same page and from other men that have been fathers that have had you know raised families we don't do that anymore at least i don't see it happening yeah i don't, I don't see it often either no and bob what do you think is there, is there a difference you know when we talk about masculinity do women admire something about masculinity that's different than what men admire about masculinity because you talk about for example uh Good question on the retreat Find your passion and become a man that both men and women admire. When we think about masculinity, you know, there's, there's some good positive traits with masculinity. I'm just curious, and maybe it's the same, but do you think women admire something different about masculinity than what men value? I think the true masculine qualities are equally respected by both sides. You know, the biggest thing for women... I've got I've got a saying that love to a woman is being taken care of. Uh, I think it's you know I get back to the safety and security thing, especially again once there's children involved. For a woman to be taken care of, be protected, be provided for, knowing that she's safe and secure, when they have that, and that, and that I believe is what my mother had. You know I, I keep going back to my parents. My dad was a good provider. He was a good protector. He was a good he was a good man. He was a solid man. And I think I'm going to say that she felt extremely safe and secure with him more than anything else. And to the degree that men can provide that for their women and for their family, they're doing a good job. Talk about love for a minute. Love to a man is something totally different. You know, I believe love to a man is acceptance. If I wanted to put it into a word, it's more than that. I mean, I'm simplifying things here, but I believe that if a man feels truly accepted doesn't need much more if I've got a woman in my life that accepts me for who I am what I am how I am that's pretty good <laughs> you know what it, that's that's a pretty good deal do I need somebody to take care of me no I mean that's that's kind of my job that's my territory as a provider yeah for sure yeah well Bob let's uh begin to close out the show here and what is one final takeaway that you would like to give Father Nation from this episode? If there's, if there's just one thing that you would want the audience to remember, what would that be? I'll go back to what I said about be, making life difficult for your son. You know, we need to do that. And I, I don't I don't want to say that to sound to be harsh because it's not. Believe me, it's not. There's a lot of love involved in that. You need to do it with love. The world is a very competitive, difficult place out there for young men. We need to prepare them for the world. And we do that by making life difficult and challenging them uh, in a fatherly, loving way. They need to earn what they get. And for daughters, because I had one of each in the beginning, uh, still do, is to show them what a good man is. You know, we do this by treating their mothers with respect, love, acceptance. Uh, be the man you'd want your daughter to marry. You're showing her what a man is, what an honorable man is, what a good man is. You know, be a policeman with a big heart for both of them. This is Jesse Foster with Father Nation. You've been listening today to Bob Monroe. He's with artofmasculinity.ca. If you like what you've heard, run on over there. Again, it's artofmasculinity.ca. He does retreats for men, 
on topic of masculinity. The topic of masculinity is a big topic. You, to be a, to be a man, you have to understand women. You have to know how to communicate with women. To be a man, you have to be a part of a, a team. You have to have some brothers. You, to be a man, you you should be a leader. You so, some, have some leadership traits, and there's so much more to to being a man. But the top of, of masculinity is something we all can can think about more and, and grow in. Again, this is Father Nation, where we interview dads about their experiences as a dad and let their wisdom illuminate your path to become a better dad. Father Nation is made possible today in part by Al Cole from CBS Radio, who now partners with the iTunes Radio Network. Among the talk shows heard on the Al Cole People of Distinction Broadcasting Network is with the actress who played the part of Drew Barrymore's mother on Steven Spielberg's E.T., actress Dee Wallace. I'm happy to have Father Nation now airing over the Live 365 Network and the iTunes Radio Network. Bob, we thank you for coming on Father Nation today and sharing your wisdom. Great, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's Al Cole, host of the syndicated talk show, People of Distinction, throwing the spotlight on another one of my guests of distinction, this time taking an awesome step forward to great fatherhood in our world with the outstanding work of Jesse Foster. Jesse's the creator of the Father Nation podcast, a show to showcase dads and their committed professional work to help other dads, too. Jesse interviews fathers from all over the world to learn from them their deep, dedicated, and sometimes even playful experiences as dads so that they can share their amazing wisdom with you. In Jesse's own words, let the journeys of dads featured on my Father Nation podcast illuminate your path as a dad, too. What could be better? Hey, And if you like the message, I want you to run to this website and support Jesse's podcast. Father Nation podcast and the great work of all dads worldwide. Go to fathernation.com. That's www.fathernation.com. And remember, hearing about the successes, the aha moments, and even the occasional failures of other dads can help you avoid their mistakes, emulate their successful strategies, and take action yourself to become a better dad. So again, run to this website, fathernation.com. That's www.fathernation.com. Jesse Foster's Father Nation podcast, helping you to imprint the kind of legacy in your family that you desire to create. <laughs>